Dragon Age Origins was rated M for Mature by the ESRB and contains blood, intense violence, language, partial nudity, and sexual content. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, my name is Emeronith and I play games for the internet, and today we're playing Dragon Age Origins. Uh, upon the completion of Reclaiming Soldier's Peak, it is now time for another Codex entry reading. <clears throat> Starting with Article 99. The History of Soldier's Peak, Chapter 1. The Grey Warden base at Soldier's Peak was built in the middle of the Glory Age, several decades after the Second Blight was ended. Before then, Grey Wardens in Ferelden would take up residence in castles and forts that belonged to generous nobles. Warden Commander Gaspar Astorian desired a fortified headquarters where his forces could train and live. He planned that Soldier's Peak would be a city unto itself. The defeat of the Darkspawn and the Archdemon Zazakel was fresh in the minds of Fer the Ferelden people and many were willing to donate gold to build Commander Astorian's fortress. Soldier's Peak was fully completed within ten years and dedicated to the Maker in 934 Glory. It wouldn't be... Never mind. I know better than to expect accuracy in this nonsense. From the History of the Grey Wardens in Ferelden by Brother Jenna TV, Chantry Scholar. Brother Jenna TV, this is why nobody takes you seriously. You get your dates wrong. Glory Age should be farther back than 9, because 9 is the Dragon Age. Article 100, The History of Soldier's Peak, Chapter 2. As he approached his 60th year, rumors swirled that the corruption in the Warden Commander Astorian's blood was beginning to take its toll. According to reports from that time, the Commander experienced terrifying waking dreams and heard his name whispered in the dark corners of Soldier's Peak. It is said that Astorian would spend hours locked up alone in the Great Hall of the base, muttering to himself, though no one was ever able to make out what he was saying. Many also believed that Astorian began, in secret, to draw up plans to expand his fortress, adding to it hidden passages and alcoves, all to protect himself from the shadows that pursued him. No one knows whether Astorian was able to complete his project, for his deteriora deterioration had become obvious to anyone who spent any amount of time with him. He was quickly replaced by one commander, Frida Howick. Astorian was taken to Orzammar, where he submitted to the calling, the last rite of the Grey Wardens, and went to his be went to his death with honor. From the history of the Grey Wardens in Ferelden, by Brother Jenna TV, Chantry Scholar. Article 101. The History of Soldier's Peak, Chapter 3 After Astorian's death, the rumors and theories became increasingly outlandish. One of the more ridiculous rumors told of Astorian's infatuation with an elven princess of lore, whom he was trying to resurrect in a secret ritual chamber through the use of blood magic and the princess's favorite food, raspberry jam. Warden Commander Frida Halwick launched a thorough investigation into Astorian's secret plans, but was unable to uncover any evidence that anything in Soldier's Peak had been changed. Commander Halwick declared that the rumors about Asturian were a slight on his memory, and that anyone found repeating them would be harshly punished. The stories were thus silenced. From the History of the Grey, Wo of Grey Wardens in Ferelden, by Brother Jenna TV, Chantry Scholar. Article 102. The History of Soldier's Peak, Chapter 4. There was one mystery, however, that persisted, and this mystery perplexed even Commander Howick herself. When Commander Astorian went to his calling in the Deep Roads, he did not have in his, in his hand his sword, Astorian's Might, forged for him by dwarven smiths and presented to him upon the completion of Soldier's Peak. Nor did he pass the sword on to his successor, or to any other Grey Warden. While some maintained that Asturian had simply destroyed the sword in his dotage, others believed he had stashed it away somewhere in Soldier's Peak. 
One young warden claimed that a Sturian had once grabbed him by the shoulders, fixed him with an unwavering gaze, and said, The sword will remind you what it is to be a warden. Speak your oath to me when the shadows come. You must speak the words. What was this supposed to mean was never made clear. What this was supposed to mean was never made clear. From the History of the Grey Wardens in Ferelden, by Brother Genetivi, Chantry Scholar. Article 10 there 191 Sophia Dryden Sophia Dryden is Ferelden is Ferelden's light and her most brilliant jewel nothing on this earth can ever quench her fire Arlessa Sophia Dryden was the young Arlen's rival for the throne of Ferelden Dryden was a strong and charismatic leader with much support from the Banorn when Arlen finally won the crown Dryden refused to relent she pushed her claim was caught and was accused of treason her sympathizers continued to support her, however. In order to appease them, Dryden was spared execution and forced to join the Grey Wardens instead. Dryden survived the joining and dazzled the Grey Wardens at Soldier's Peak with her leadership skills and charm. She eventually rose to the ranks to become the Warden Commander of Ferelden. Before Commander Dryden, the Grey Wardens were seen as a relic of an older time and an unnecessary drain on the nobles' coffers. Dryden, though, with her political connections, reinvigorated the Wardens and rapidly increased their numbers. In the meantime, King Arland proves himself, proved himself a devious king, willing to go to brutal lengths to silence his opponents. Arland's reign of ter terror grew worse with each passing year, and some of the bands approached Commander Dryden in desperation, begging her to intercede. She agreed, and thus was the rebellion against King Arland born. Arland learned of the rebellion and took steps to end it. He publicly suspended all tithing to the Grey Wardens and declared that they were no longer welcome in Ferelden. Some of the Wardens, mindful that they were supposed to remain politically neutral, felt disgraced by Dryden's involvement in Ferelden politics, and left her side even as the King's forces lay siege to Soldier's Peak. The siege took months and ended with the death of Sophia Dryden, from the personal files of Levy Dryden, merchant. Addendum. King Ireland had driven the Grey Wardens from Ferelden, and after a siege of Soldier's Peak, the base was abandoned. When Soldier's Peak was finally entered again for the first time in centuries, it was discovered that Sophia Dryden had been possessed by a demon. Who is this? Who is... 186? Article 209 The Noladar Anthology of Dwarven Poetry the undead exhumed, born from the shallowest graves, mined from the living, by the paragon Lin Linchar, Linchikar, 744 Storm. Do you like fried mush and nug? I do not like them, Mr. Clug. I do not like fried mush and, fried mush and nug. Would you eat them on a rug? If you eat, you'll get a hug. I would not eat on the, eat them on a rug, nor f from you I would not want a hug. Then would you drink from them from a jug? Come on, come on, give them a chug. I would not drink them from a jug. I'd rather eat a slimy slug. Would you eat them with a bug? Would you share them with a thug? I would not share them with a thug. I would not eat them with a bug. Not for a hug, not on a rug. From a jug, I will not chug. Come on, come on now, Mr. Clug. Are you some kind of drug? Are you on some kind of drug? Eat them in this hole I dug. Eat them, eat them, don't just shrug. I've had it, had it, Mr. Clug. Down into that hole you dug. Down with the thug and the slug and the bug. By Paragon Seuss. 12, tw uh, 212, glory. <laughs> Never surrender, dwarvish blood may be lukewarm, but a vital is ore. By the Paragon Lynchkar. 748 Storm. There was once a miner of Lyrium, whose face looked like a perineum, perineum, oh god, I can't say that word. The dead got him too, not much he could do, with a face like that he was a shoo -in. By the wordsmith, Carlal of House Yon Yonuk, Yonuk. 911 dragon. <laughs> yeah. 
Article 223, Trian's Journal. 21 for Ventus. Noticed Gorm running around trying to get pieces of my sibling's ceremonial armor ready for the feast. Stopped him and asked him how preparations were going. He mentioned that one of the bracers had a spot of tarnish on it. Was quite impressed at his dedication. He is most loyal to our family. 23 for Ventus. Was on way to discuss treaty with father when came across a messenger waiting in the hall. On being asked why he was loitering about the royal palace, he mumbled something about having a gift for the new commander, and asked me to and asked me, begged, almost, to pass along some object or another to my sibling. Me! The heir to the throne of Orzammar does not run errands for a messenger! Must have been new on the job. Had him thrown out, however. Still reeling from the gall of it. Learned later that Balin had told messenger that the quickest way to get things to our sibling was through me and had made him wait until I came by. For s so unseemly for a prince of Orzammar to play such tricks. He needs to grow up and understand that, as royalty, he has responsibilities. 24 for Ventus. Found Balin's little... playmate. Again! Lurking in the hall. Lurking about in the corridors outside his bedroom this morning. Must have been trying to steal something or already had. Bosom seemed fuller than most decent ladies. Some jewels hidden in the bodice. Anyway, pretended not to see her. Would have been awkward otherwise. Wish Balin would keep her confined to his room if he must have her around. Little brother is too concerned with fun and pleasure, not s and not serious enough about his duties as prince. Must talk to him about discipline when we have time. Unfortunately, much too busy with the many tasks father has laid upon my shoulders. 26 for Ventus. Remember to send small token of gratitude to Jalia Helmy. Alliance between Helmy and Idukin must be kept strong. Lady Jalia will, of course, accept proposal of marriage since we'll be king sooner or later, but never hurts to be polite and keep the lady happy. Here there are some surfacers selling silks. Maybe we'll send a second. Maybe we'll send second out for something nice. Jalia's favorite color? Turquoise. 28 for Ventus. Heard of, about there being provings held in our sibling's honor. They did not have provings for me at my first commission, and I am the heir. What is going on? Must go watch these provings and make presents felt. Orzammar must not forget that I am to be her next king. From the Journal of Trian Idukin. Oh, Trian. Poor man. <sighs> Article 226. Sophia Dryden's Journal. 21... Eloviesta. It is done. The nobles have thrown their lot in with Arland. Arland, the snot-nosed man-child. Arland, who did not walk till he was in his fifth year. Arland, who had to be pried off his nursemaid's breast not two years ago. Or so it is whispered. The Terran. The Terrans and the Arles believe him to be a simpleton and easily led. But I have seen something in the boy's eye, and it terrifies me. Ten... Melor... Melioris. I have watched the summer day processions from a room high in Fort Dracon. The regent has me for treason, when my only guilt is, being, is of being true to my country and my heart. My guard's tongue was easily loosened with a gift of a ruby ring, and I am told that the bands are fighting against my sentence. I shall pray, but not hope that it will be anything but the gallows for me. Two for Ventus. The draught was like a bitter fire, but I survived. Weep for me, for I survived. Would that they had made a clean end for me. I should have died a lady, the greatest of the Drydens, not lived to become this nothing, this monstrous nothing. Nineteen... Matronalis. Enough. I shall waste no more time with wretched womanish lamentation. Death would have been easy, but fate saw fit to spare me, and I will seize upon this chance. The Grey Wardens are an army, and an the old commander is weak, a wisp of a man. I will ins inspire the Wardens, and Ireland will rue the day he spared my life. Select entries from the Journal of Warden Commander Sophia Dryden. And that's all for now. Uh, nice and short, <laughs> this one. Uh... And uh, I hope to see you next time. Until then, bye-bye.